All right, hey guys, today we will be doing a very cool tutorial in Adobe After Effects, and we'll be going over how you can create RGB character splits. So this is a quick preview of a scene I attempted to use the effect on, and it does look pretty neat. Uh, we have this sort of outline that repeats, and you can see that over here, this repeating outline with a little bit of tracing around it. And this is a combination of some Sapphire plugins and some built-in After Effects plugins. So this is the effect we will have at the end of the video. So it is pretty neat. And there are a bunch of different applications for this. So even if you're not working with an AMV, you can use this on any footage, anything that is masked or cut out. And so this is what we will be creating today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. And uh, I think we can hop into the main part and we're going to start off with a new composition which I'm just going to call RGB. Now once we have our new composition I'm really quickly going to set up the scene. Uh, you would probably have your scene set up by now and you just want to work with the effect so I'll try to go as quickly as possible. And I'm just borrowing a free mask pack uh, so I don't have to spend time on the tutorial masking it out. Uh, but if you are having trouble masking, there are some built-in After Effects plugins. So I'm really quickly just trying to find the clip here. Um, so there's stuff like Linear Color Code or uh, Key Light, which can help you mask easier and faster. So if you can, try to use that to help you out. I know masking isn't, isn't everyone's favorite thing to be doing, but... When you are working with an RGB split, you do have to uh, have the character or object masked out. So right here we have our mask. Oops, sorry, that took a little, a little longer than I expected. So I'm going to use the alt and the square bracket to uh, really quickly cut this out. And then let me just find the end of this. Oops. So I'm going to use the alt square bracket and cut that out and then I'm just going to use the square bracket to uh, pull it over real fast. We're going to pull in our project and uh, we're just going to shorten our clips right here. So we have this setup. Uh, again, one of the built-in After Effects plugins are Keylight. So this can really help you out if you want, if you have a solid background, of course, you can really easily cut it out. And then we also have our snow particles, so we're going to add key light to that. And again, we're going to cut out that green screen. And we have our snow particles, I'm just going to slow down the, the snow particles so they fall a little bit slower. I'll just drag this over. All right, that's good enough. So we have our scene set up and this is what we will be working with. We have uh, snow, we have our characters masked out and I did mention that we will be using a Sapphire plugin for this. And I don't think I have made a Sapphire installation video on how to install the plugins. I do know that there are a ton on YouTube. So uh, I'll give you, I'll show you guys really quickly. Uh, in After Effects, I have downloaded the Sapphire plugin, so there are a ton of different ones. There are transitions, uh, different warps, different uh, ton of different shakes and glitches and anything that you can really think of. Uh, it doesn't take too long, so uh, again, there are tons of videos on YouTube on how to install and download the Sapphire plugins. I would recommend checking those ones out. And we will be using Warp, Sapphire Warp Chroma in this video. And I'm just going to drag and drop that in our mask. So that is this one right here. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to rename this to mask. So that we can remember that this is going to be our mask. And I'll change the color to yellow. Alright, so what this does is it, do, uh, it basically does the RGB split for us. And there isn't a lot of work except for making some small adjustments. Uh, once we have it set up on the main mask, we will have to duplicate it one time. Uh, this one I will change to a different color. So maybe if we have red, do red here. Yeah. 
and this one we will remove uh, the warp chroma because we only want it to be in the background sort of like an RGB split on the back of the characters. So once we have that set up I'm going to shut off uh, the main mask for now which is our red one and we're going to start working with the warp chroma in the background. The steps um, we will probably set to around 7 and this is just how many times it will loop the characters. Uh, from ZDist we want to set this to around 1 because we want this to match up with with this mask right here so we want this to match up pretty well again I will shut it off and go back to our bottom mask with the warp chroma on it the from shift X and to shift X are the only ones that we will be working with here because we do want a little bit of a shift in the X and Y direction uh, so for the from shift X I'll probably set this to maybe like 40 and then the to shift X I'll probably set this to uh, maybe minus 80, minus 70. This is just going to create those outlines for us and that's really what we're looking for here. And the reason we move from and to is because this is going to show the orange on one side and the blue on the other. If you just want to have maybe only work with one side, you can always just play around with, uh, with one of these values and only work with, uh, work with it from one side. going to set it back to how I had it before so this is at 40 and 80 that looks re relatively good for now I'll set this to minus 70 and again you can always just turn this back on and off and you can see how the effect is looking you can see we have these these brief outlines um, we just need to work with it a little bit more to make it look better our brightness I will have to set this down a little bit so let me just pull this down because we do not want this to overshadow the main uh, the main clip. So we have our RGB split mostly set up. Uh, the colors is completely up to you. You can change this however you want. But because this is an RGB split, I will be leaving this at red, green, and blue. Again, you can change this to whatever you want. And you can do some pretty neat stuff depending on the colors. So again, that's completely up to you how you want to uh, play around and set that up. Uh, for the most part, that's all we will be playing with. Again, you can play around with all of this if you want to customize it and set it up yourself. So we have that in our background. What's really cool about this clip or what we're going to be using about this clip is when they turn around, it sort of gets to this main part right here and it sort of zooms in. So because we have that here, as soon as they turn around, so right here, I'm going to set some keyframes for position. So let me set a keyframe position right here. And then by the end of it, we want to have this shift over to this side. So we want to see this start to come out. And again, the more you shift this out is the more you're going to see that RGB split. I'll probably set it to around here. That looks pretty good. So again, I will highlight these keyframes and I will easy ease them. So I, oops, that was not what I wanted to click. We will try to select easy ease there we go and this is just going to have it so for the main part we'll just have a slight rgb split and then when they turn around it's really going to slide out which is what we wanted to happen here all right so once we have that set up we will be adding a few more plugins to make this look even better a really cool one is find edges which is built into after effects and we're just going to drag and drop that again onto this mask and this is going to trace out our outline for us. Again, you can play around with how much you want this to blend and how much of an outline you want to have. Uh, it is completely up to you. I will. I just want a very light outline so maybe I'll set this to uh, 70 and you can see a little bit of an outline here. Again, this is completely up to you. You can also play around with the invert for now I'm just going to leave this. Uh, on the normal settings and then we will add a little bit of a glow glow will always make your effect look even better so sapphire glow is one of the best and one of my most frequently used glows so a very useful plugin again from the uh, from the sapphire suite 
So I'm just going to decrease the brightness and add a bit of a threshold. That's really all you really need to change here. We're going to have a nice glow in our background. And again, we can always play around with our find edges if we think it needs to be changed a bit. Alright. So I'm going to preview through it again. Just going to see how it looks for now. Give it our first preview. So we have a little bit of an RGB split at the beginning. So characters start spinning around. Then as we hit this point right here, it's going to shift and our RGB out and we're going to start seeing it a bit more. And I think we do have it shifted a little bit too much. We can always decrease this value. Just going to decrease this value. So it fits a little bit better. So we have our spin around and we have our RGB split. Again, the effect was very quick and it does look really cool. I hope you guys learned something new in this video. And for more weekly content and tutorials and possibly anime videos, if I ever have time to work on a project, please make sure to like and subscribe. And once again, thank you for watching this video.